This mini PC has 16 cores, 64 gigabytes of memory, a one terabyte SSD, and dual 10 gig ethernet. It's super quiet and it has a special trick up its sleeve because you can actually connect an external GPU to the system in a kind of cool way. With that, I think we have a whole bunch to get to today, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the B-Link GTI 15 Ultra. Now you might be asking, hey Patrick, didn't you do this mini PC before? And well, we did a different version. This one over here is the B-Link GTI 12 Ultra, which uses an older Alder Lake processor, but it is very similar, except, well, pretty much everything is just upgraded a ton in this system. And since just about everything has been upgraded, I thought, well, it's time to go and take a look at this little mini PC and see what it offers. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's talk about the front panel here. Now, first thing, on the top here, you actually have these little tiny holes. That's because this has a multi-microphone array. And so there's a bunch of little microphones and the idea is that it's able to go and isolate background noise because you have multiple microphones. I'm not a huge fan of either the microphones or the speakers on this, but I understand that there are folks that like using that feature. You know, if you're just doing maybe video calls or something like that, maybe that would be a good example of something that's useful here. Another small but useful feature that you might not recognize on this is this power button. Now, it may look just like a power button to you, but it's actually also a fingerprint reader. So if you want to get into your PC without typing the password and just do biometric fingerprint reading, boom, here you go, and you're in. Now, we've already talked about the microphones, but there's also an audio jack on the front for more audio. And then we get a couple more features. Like first one, we get this SD card slot here, which I just love in PCs, especially if you're doing any kind of photography or videography. Now, the front also has two USB ports. Now, there's a USB type A port and a USB type C port. These are both USB 3.2 Gen 2, so they're 10 gigabit ports. They're not necessarily the fastest in the world, and I do kind of wish that this was like a USB 4 port, but on the other hand, you know what? At least we have a number of different port options on the front. As we get to the back, I just want to point out that this is a nice little metal chassis. There are some plasticky bits on the bottom and on the back, but overall, it, it does feel pretty solid, and you're not going to see like big vents on the side either. It's only really at the rear, and so let's get to that next. Now, one of the cool features of this mini PC, especially compared to previous generations of mini PCs, is that we have an internal power supply. So it used to be that you get this mini PC and then have a giant power brick, especially on these higher power systems. But here, that's not the case because the power supply has moved inside the system. Now, there are gonna be people that I know are gonna light up the comments and say, Patrick, this is the most horrible thing ever because with an external power brick, I could get my own power brick and it's easy to service, easy to replace one day if I want to, and all that kind of stuff, I get it guys, but it just is cleaner if you have it internal and it kind of makes the entire package much smaller. Next, let's talk a little bit about the display outputs. You have an HDMI port, plus you have a display port. Then there's also the USB-C port here. Now the difference between the front one and the back one is that this is your 40 gig port versus the back one that is a 10 gig port. So very different in terms of capabilities. The other thing is we get another audio jack and we get two more USB ports. Now these USB ports are a little bit tricky because you might look at them and say, oh, those are USB 2 ports because they look kind of like grayish and they're not blue, but it turns out that they are USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and they are 10 gigabit per second ports. So even though the color seems like it's done to match the back of this, they are faster ports. On the back, you're gonna see that we also have this giant vent and some heat sinks that you can see in there. That's really to cool the CPU to make sure that that thing doesn't overheat, we have a nice size vent. Okay, let's talk about the big feature, which are these ports right here. These are dual 10 gigabit ethernet ports, and instead of some kind of like low end or weird controller, they're actually using the Intel E610, which is a more modern controller. It supports things like PCIe Gen 4, which makes it more efficient to integrate into mini PCs just like this one. Now you might ask, what's the big deal about the Intel E610? Well, the big thing is it's not a consumer NIC. It's actually more of like a data center NIC, but it's a newer generation one, which means that you get more features, get more offloads, all that kind of stuff that you would not necessarily see in some of the lower end or older NICs you're gonna get those in this one. Now, this is a probably a good time to just talk about one of the other mini PCs that had this NIC that we definitely saw some weird things with, and that's this one over here. This is a B-Link GTR 9 Pro, and this is an absolutely awesome system. In fact, it's one of my favorite AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 systems out there. It has 120 gig, eight gigabytes of memory. It is definitely a much higher cost system, but it also used the Intel E610. And something that when we did our review of this unit, and we've been talking about in reviews since we published our review 
of this one, is that this Intel E610 in here had some problems. I mean, it was not a is not stable. They're supposedly fixing that in December and we're recording this before. So, you know, maybe they're going to fix it uh, the, this month. But this was a, a challenge, I think, for the Intel E610. And that's a bummer, right? Because it's actually a pretty darn good NIC. We've seen it in other systems. We're starting to see it more on the data center side. And so the fact that it is in this GTI 15 Ultra, I think is a good one. And this one we've had much better luck in terms of stability on. So in terms of overall execution of the 10 gigabit ethernet, I think this is a better execution than the higher end box for B-Link, if that makes any sense. It's also not a real tech NIC where you tend to have a little bit less offloads and features. And so you get those extra features that, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are gonna look at this and they're gonna be like, Patrick, I don't really care about extra features. I just want 10 gigabit networking to go to my NAS or something. I get it, this will do that. But there are other folks that are like, oh, does it have feature X, Y, Z? And they're gonna go look it up and there's a good chance that it will have it because it is a newer data center NIC instead of a consumer NIC. And that kind of brings me to another feature, which is down below. Now you're gonna see that we have some, you know, little rubber feet here. We have some, uh, you know, some of this like little venting here, but then you're also gonna notice this is a special connector. So over here, we have this, which you'll see here, what you basically do is you take the, PC, the mini PC, you slide it in here and we're going to go over this in a little bit. But the idea is that with that PCIe slot, that is a kind of, it's a very custom PCIe slot. So it's not a standard PCIe slot. Just want to point that out. But the modified PCIe connector that's on this GPU dock makes with the bottom of the system, you basically slide it in like this and boom, you now have an external GPU for your system. Now, a couple things. One, uh, this is like $179, so it's not a free and included solution. But I'm also gonna point out that this has its own internal power supply. So some other ones, like I think the Minis Form one, you actually have to go and get your own power supply. So this one already has a power supply that's built in. And then what you essentially do is you take a GPU, we're using the AMD Radeon Pro W7700 here, because that's what we used in the previous gen, so I just wanna show you it again. You have some GPU cables here, and then you have USB as well as two Wi-Fi antenna leads. Now, the what reason that there's Wi-Fi antenna leads here is because you can actually add in Wi-Fi, and this is when we talk about the modified connector, right? One of the things that you get with this is the ability to add like a Wi-Fi NIC in this base station, and you might want to do that if you also want to get better Wi-Fi because when you have this mini PC in this configuration, it does play with the Wi-Fi signaling a bit. And so I think B-Link had this idea like, hey, what we can do is we can go add, if you, you know, are going to go do this whole GPU dock thing, spend a couple extra bucks, put a Wi-Fi NIC and go install that. You just install it on the bottom here and then put some Wi-Fi antennas. You can move the antennas, right? And just get better signal strength. So I actually like that idea and, uh, and just something that's kind of neat. Now we're going to talk about the performance of this in a little bit, but what I want to do instead is get inside the system so you can see all the cool things that are in there because it's a little different, especially if you've missed a couple generations of mini PCs, there's going to be a lot that's different in here. Okay, so let's get inside the system. And to do that, there are four little screws on the bottom here. Now, when you get inside, one of the first things that you're going to notice is that this is very different than previous generation mini PCs. And that's for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that there's a lot more components that are packed in this. Previous generation mini PCs often didn't have things like speakers. They didn't have dust filters. They didn't have those internal power supplies. So just from a structure, how many components are in here, there's a lot more here. Now, look, guys, I said this before, the speakers that are in this, um, you know, you're going to look like a total like dork or something if you're like rolling around with this thing like a boom box the speakers are definitely not that good by any means but maybe if you're just trying to do a call they're i guess okay and better than nothing on the other hand if you have the opportunity to go get speakers elsewhere or headphones definitely go and use those there's a good reason that this supports bluetooth now personally one of the things i don't love is getting inside the system where you have the dust filter power supply the audio and all that kind of stuff now once you get under all of that there are some service items First off, you get two DDR5 SO DIMM slots. So if you want to use like higher capacity DDR5 memory, you can do that. Now, of course, since we uh, started testing this unit, this came with 64 gigabytes of memory. The 64 gigabytes of memory is a lot more expensive than it was when this originally arrived. Also, uh, you know, the idea of putting 128 gigabytes in here seemed like, of course we would go do that. Like, why would we not go do that? You know, frankly, I don't know if I would go and upgrade to 128 gigabytes unless I really needed that because that can cost as much as this whole entire mini PC itself, right? So I'll just say that's memory pricing today. I don't know what to do about it, but uh, we did do a piece recently talking about the CXL memory expander 
standards which can compress memory for hyperscalers, so hopefully they use less memory in the future. So definitely go check that video out. And we also have some content on like how companies like Meta are using that on the STH main site. But that really doesn't do much for us today because right now I think you're gonna keep this at 64 gigabytes if you get it at 64 gigabytes. Now, there are a couple other service items. One, you're gonna notice that we have our Wi-Fi solution. So we have Wi-Fi 7 in this and it's a BE200 solution. So pretty good Wi-Fi 7. We also have Bluetooth and then we have two SSD slots. Now we have one SSD here, which is our one terabyte SSD. And then we have another SSD slot, which is another M.2 2280, 80 millimeter SSD slot slot and that allows you to have two SSDs in this little chassis. Frankly, I think that's great. I think that, you know, there are going to be folks that of course are going to say like, oh, I wish it had like five different M.2 slots and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine. You can go say that all you want. But at the end of the day, guys, look, if you have one or two SSDs in this little chassis, I think that's pretty darn good. And frankly, for most people, that's going to be plenty. With that though, I think it's worth it to talk about the performance. When we talk about performance, the number one new thing in here is a new processor. We have the Intel Core Ultra 9 285H because we just need lots of descriptors for a 16 core, 16 thread processor. If you were wondering, we no longer get hyper threading in these generations, even though Intel CEO Luputan has said hyper threading is actually a good feature. So I think that's going to be something that will come back in future generations. But for now, we do not have any of the uh, you know hyper threading in this. So it's 16 cores, 16 threads. And since in the previous generation, we also had one of these little docks, I thought like, hey, what is a better idea in terms of a comparison point? Just to talk a little bit about the generational, you know, what does a year and change get you in terms of upgrades? I thought, well, that's a great way to do a comparison between the Alder Lake and the you know 12th gen version of this and also the newer generation. Okay, so let's head over to Geekbench 6 and we're just gonna look at the CPU scores, right? So something to keep in mind is number one, Geekbench is not the best, at, especially Geekbench 6, is not the best at scaling linearly as you add CPU cores. So as we get to these higher end CPUs with more cores, it tends to be a little bit more challenging for Geekbench. Now, some other thing though that I want to point out, and I'm going to say it's Geekbench 6, Geekbench 5, of course, is much better at scaling to multiple cores. It's just, uh, I don't know, that's the way it is. So here's a little bit uh, that you need to know. So first things is that that Intel Core i9 12900H that was in the previous generation, that did support hyper threading. So we get 20 threads in that, even though it's a... 14 core processor. But of course we get the new architectural generation with the 16 core, 16 thread processor. So we're gonna see how that performs. And when we look at Geekbench 6, you get a, I don't know, 19, 20% upgrade in terms of both your single thread as well as your multi-threaded performance. That's not bad, I'll take that any day. But really that CPU side is only part of the story because when we look at the integrated GPU, that's where you see just crazy massive gains. The Intel Arc 140T graphics that are in this versus the XE graphics that are in the previous generation. Well, I mean, we're talking like 200% on Geekbench 6's GPU compute score. I mean, it's crazy numbers in terms of an upgrade. So I think we've established that both the CPU and GPU that are integrated into these systems, this is a pretty big upgrade. And especially on the GPU side, not only do you get, of course, the new and faster iGPU that's you know, just use for more stuff, but you also get like newer codecs and all that just because we're a few generations in the future. But something else I wanted to check out in the process was like, hey, you know, we have a new design of a PCIe dock. It's like a, you know, a new generation of this whole system. Like, is it any better? So we took the exact same W770 that we had put into this one for its review. And we said, okay, well, let's go try it again. And, uh, you know, try it with the brand new one. And what we saw was that we're actually getting like 20% better performance on the external GPU than we would have seen on the previous gen when we did that review a while ago. And that's really not a bad upgrade. And of course the W770 is not necessarily like the fastest GPU anymore. You'd probably see a much better result if you're looking at a like uh, Nvidia GeForce RTX 5000 series. It's just, that's what we were using at the time. So I wanted to keep that consistent. But of course there are a number of you know, 4,000 series, 5,000 series, all kinds of different GPUs that this is compatible with. But of course there are options that if you want something faster, you can totally go do that. And for anybody that's wondering about the AI performance of this, we used MLperf Client V1.5. So we actually did the new runs on this. And uh, we did it not only with the CPU, but the 
integrated GPU, the NPU, as well as the W7700. So we have a couple different options. We'll go and show you that, but it's right here. Okay, so let's talk a little about the power consumption noise, just the base system. We're not gonna talk about GPU because that's gonna vary so much, right? But when we had the system online, something that we found is that the you know idle power consumption was pretty commonly between maybe the nine and 12 watt range, which is pretty normal. Sometimes I jump a little bit higher than that, but that was pretty normal. Also at idle, this thing is super quiet. I mean, guys, we're talking like in our 34 dBA noise floor studio, we're gonna like like 34.2 or three, and just like normal variations. You can almost not even hear it running, which is awesome. This is actually a very quiet system. Now, of course that's at idle, but under load, this is something that's totally refreshing with us, right? So here we have this system and it's been running for a little bit now. It's starting to get warm in the back, but overall for, especially for 100% CPU utilization, this is not warm or that warm, I'll just say that. The other thing is that it's not that loud. We're only at about 37 dBA in our 34 dBA noise floor studio. So that's pretty darn good. And power consumption is only about 75 watts. We've been seeing mini PCs for generations now that are in the 120, maybe even more watts and at the wall. And so just to me, this is really good power consumption. You know, we're talking about getting more performance, Power consumption is not that much. I mean, it's actually much better than a lot of the like one liter PCs these days, even though it's a little bit larger chassis. I think that lets them keep it quiet. So, you know, when I was talking about in our hardware overview, this extra, you know, heat sink and extra height for the heat sink and the fans and stuff, this is one of the big benefits, right? You're getting a very quiet, I mean, this is not annoying to have this close to me running 100% CPU utilization at all. And so just to me, that is a key feature of this that can't be ignored. Now guys, in all of these videos, I love to have a key lessons learned, like what do we learn by doing this? And there's a couple things. One of the big ones is just frankly, we've been doing a lot more of these more expensive mini PCs that have the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 in them. We've done an entire series recently on that. And you know, frankly, I love those because they have a giant integrated GPU. They also have a fast CPU and just the overall combination I think is great, especially with that additional LPDDR5X memory that's found in those 128 gigabytes is always awesome. But on the other hand, not everybody needs that. Not everybody wants that. And for a lot of folks, they're gonna look at a solution like the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. And those folks are just gonna say, hey, look, I love the fact that you have 120 gigabytes, but not enough memory bandwidth. I'd rather have a GPU. And so for those folks buying a system like this, maybe $180 uh, dock, and then having a 600 watt power supply already in that dock, ready to go and run your GPU, will give you a lot more performance if your memory bandwidth bound and your workload runs better on a GPU and you don't need 128 gig or 96 gigabytes of memory, anything like that. I actually think this is a better solution for a lot of folks when they don't need that extra memory capacity. And to me, the big shocker in this is actually how much I like the fact that this is such a quiet mini PC, guys. This is one where, you know, I think that some of the mini PCs, especially after you have them running for a while, they get so loud and it's just, it's terrible. But on this one, this thing just runs at 75 watts, not too bad. It runs at 37 dBA, 38 dBA, not too bad either. And overall, I mean, guys, that is a phenomenal combo if you just want something that's quiet. Do I love the fact that this has a mic and speakers? No, the speakers aren't great, but for maybe just for doing video calls, it's gonna be fine. And frankly, for many folks, I think this is the kind of mini PC that's gonna check a lot of boxes that previous generations just didn't. But of course, I'd love to hear what you guys think, so let me know down in the comments. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching, have an awesome day.